30 years of Sound Blaster. So here we are with Creative's latest and greatest sound card, the Sound Blaster X AE5. Is this Creative's best Sound Blaster? Well, let's find out. But first, let's take a quick look back how it all started. This is my very first sound card I purchased. It is the original Sound Blaster from the early 90s. You could upgrade it with these two chips and add compatibility with Creative's very first sound card, the Creative Music System. The DAC is 8-bit with a sample rate of 22 kHz, so we have come a long way as the Sound Blaster X AE5 has an ES9016K2M Sabre 32 Ultra DAC with 32-bit and a sample rate of 384 kHz. Creative followed up with the Sound Blaster 2, raising the sample rate to 44 kHz. The Sound Blaster Pro gave us stereo and a mixer. And with the Sound Blaster 16, we got CD audio quality as well as a Wave Blaster header for general MIDI boards. Saying goodbye to the ISA interface was the AW64 Gold. And then we got the Sound Blaster Live for PCI, a very popular card introducing the EAX 1.0 and 2.0 API, as well as 5.1 surround speaker support. Next up was the Audigy, and then the Audigy 2, which stepped it up with 24 bit and 96 kHz sample rate, as well as EAX Advanced HD 3.0 and 4.0. One of my favorite sound card is the Sound Blaster X-Fi. They are fantastic for Windows XP retro gaming, available for PCI as well as PCI Express, and compatible with the final version of EAX, which is version 5.0. Unfortunately then Windows Vista came along and 3D audio as we knew it was no more. But Creative gave us Alchemy, a nifty program that restores EAX compatibility with many older games. The most recent sound cards were the Recon 3D followed by the Sound Blaster set, which is what I have been using in my main desktop up until now. Creative was kind enough and sent us the Sound Blaster, so let's take a closer look. At the front of the card we have inputs for microphone or line in. Next up is the headphone port and we have three line outs for speakers from stereo up to 5.1 surround. We also have an optical output, but unfortunately the optical input that we used to get with the Recon 3D handset is absent. At the rear of the card, we've got the HD front panel port to connect to your case, and we also have a Molex power connector. Now this one is for the built-in RGB LEDs and the RGB LED controller. Now the whole RGB LED lighting craze, it's not something I'm really into, but I can see the appeal and I can understand why Creative did it. If you don't have an RGB controller yet, you can buy the sound card and you get the controller for free, so to speak. So just to be clear, the Molex power is only required for the LED lighting. You don't need it if you just want to use the sound card. In the box, we have the usual paperwork as well as a free RGB strip that you can install into your computer case. We don't get a CD anymore, so you just go to the Creative website and download the latest drivers. So I've been using this sound card for roughly a week and it sounds absolutely amazing. But also important is this software and all the features that it provides. So over the next few minutes we have a look at the software to help you get the most out of this sound card. The main page is the dashboard and here you can choose certain profiles. For example, if you want to play some games you can click on this profile. You can see all the settings and there's also a bit of information here about who is behind uh, choosing this particular profile. If you select the profile and you change any of these settings, you can see that it will change from the profile name to personal. On the dashboard, you can change all of these options. For example, you can just change the dial here, but you can also click on these shortcuts that will take you to the individual page. And they're a little bit bigger, so it's easier to use those dials. Let's have a look what's in sound. So we have the equalizer here. We have some presets, but you can also adjust the response curve uh, to your own taste. Here we've got the acoustic engine um, surround sound. That's basically up mixing. We've got the crystallizer. I've been using this quite often when you listen to low bit rate um, compressed audio files. They just, um, it makes them sound a little bit better. You can boost the bass. Smart volume, this is really interesting. 
if you ever watched a movie and there are some really quiet scenes and then when there's an action scene it gets really loud and especially if you're watching late night that can be really annoying that helps with that it basically compresses the audio so that quiet parts and loud parts that the difference is not as extreme and we've got dialogue plus that just boots boosts the vocals coming out of the center speaker and helps you basically understand the dialogue and we've got scout mode now i'm not much of a gamer these days this is uh, meant to help you locate enemies Personally, I've never used this even on the Sound Blaster set. Uh, the sound cut did a fantastic job um, on its own in locating people. Next up, let's have a look what we can find under voice, under clarity. This has all to do with connecting a microphone to the sound card. Now I'm using a USB microphone, so none of these settings work for me. You have to connect a microphone to the microphone port of the sound card. So we have noise reduction. For example, if you've got an air conditioner running or fan, that gets uh, rid of the background noise. Acoustic echo cancellation. If you're doing a Skype call, for example, with uh, speakers and the microphone, this avoids that you can hear the crosstalk, that you can hear the other person coming out of the speakers and then back into your microphone. And then we've got smart volume. I believe that just dynamically uh, adjusts the gain or the volume of the microphone so that it doesn't uh, sound too off. And under voice morph, you can change the way you sound. This might be something interesting for gamers or just to have a bit of a laugh and there are some profiles you can apply. Let's move on to lighting. Now here, this is all about the RGB LEDs. You can turn all the lights off. So even with the Molex power connected, you can disable them. But let's have a look what we can do here. So this controls the built-in light at the back of the card, whereas this controls the LED strip connected to the uh, LED lighting controller. And basically you can uh, choose profiles, you can choose the speed of the pattern, the direction, and also the colors, depending on uh, which profile you pick and i tried out that all works pretty well so if you don't have an rgb controller already in your case then i can see the appeal uh, this basically gets you into the rgb uh, lighting uh, for free basically because it comes with the sound card and next up we have a look at setup what's going on here basically you choose between using speakers and headphones so the sound card has dedicated outputs for both and you will actually hear a mechanical relay switch when you toggle between speakers and the headphones. Very important are these ones, the direct speakers and direct headphones. They basically turn off all the processing. So this just gives you a, a neutral and a flat and an unprocessed sound, which is what I like and I usually use the direct mode. And that means that all these options here, for example, surround crystallizer, um, they will all get disabled. So basically, if you're looking for a neutral sound uh, and you don't want any processing applied, just go with the direct headphone or the direct speaker option. But if you do want to play around with the equalizer and all the other options, use the headphone 7.1 or the speaker 5.1 or speaker stereo. If you're using headphones, you can change the resistance here. Basically, just Google your headphone on the manufacturer website. They tell you how many ohms it has. Mine falls into this range, so that's what I picked. And down here, you can select the type of speakers you have, desktop, bookshelf, or tower, or you can manually set the crossover frequency. Personally, I believe that the speaker system will take care of that, so I would just go with the tower option. I believe this is very similar to having the full range speaker option configured in the Windows driver. And up the top here, we've got a mixer option. Here we can configure what the input does on the back of the sound card. Is it a microphone input or is it for line in? And we can also turn on the stereo mix to digital output so that the signal gets sent through that optical output at the back of the sound card. Some of these menu options only appear depending on what you have configured. So for example, if I set my system to speakers, I get a calibration window. This basically lets you tweak the volume of the individual speakers. Um, so this is if your speaker placement isn't ideal. You can, for example, boost the volume of the rear speakers a little bit just to make them sound equal uh, from where you're sitting. And the last option down here, we've got some general settings, the language and the distance, uh, empirical or metric. 
we can have the software launch when Windows starts. I always turn it on. We can check for driver updates. I believe I've got the latest version and under recovery, you can do a reset, basically reset all the settings to factory defaults. So there you have it guys. We had a quick look back and checked out the sound card in more detail. We had a look at the software, but what does it sound like? Now listening to music and playing games with my headphones in direct mode, I found this sound absolutely amazing. Now is this Creative's best sound blaster? Well for me, nothing will ever beat my very first sound blaster. Nostalgia is just too strong and you just can't compete with happy memories. As far as the Sound Blaster XAE5 is concerned, I'm not a huge fan on that RGB lighting craze and the missing optical input is a little bit of a shame, but as far as how it sounds, and to my ears at least, this is for sure the very best sounding Sound Blaster so far. The software is also easy to use and I'm really happy to see Alchemy is still being supported for those of us who want to play some of the older games. But what do you think? What is your favorite Sound Blaster and what do you think of the Sound Blaster XAE5? And that's it for this video guys. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.